beers and Steinberg. You know what the fuck it is? Aries and Andy, you and the jerk. You know it's time to get this work. The real raw, gutter, uncut cocaine. No political corrections. Always sleep. Fuck being a woke. We discuss politics and jokes. Cry, we lick. There's levels to this shit. Before you were sucking on your mama's tit. Airy Spears don't give a fuck. We talk about race a lot. Racism. Sexism. Much love to my loyal bitch bag holders. Rollers, clip loaders. We got them in the folders. The whole world on our shoulders. Spears and Steinberg. Yeah. So, <clears throat> we are here in Bridgeport, Connecticut. And Andy and I yesterday saw Equalizer 3. Well... What'd you think of it? Give me a second. Oh my fucking God! Yo. Yo. Five yo's out of five yo's. From the gate, let me, my first question out the gate to you is, of the three equalizers, how do you rank them? Uh, one, one, two. No, 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 no. What do you mean one, one? First one, one, number oh, one. Right. Second one, number three. This one, number two. Okay, so one, three, two. Yep. Uh, and it's close. If Three and one is close. Yeah. If this would have been the first equalizer, I probably would have went with this one. But the first one told the story of who he was, a little bit more origin. Right. So I always like the origin story right. the best but uh dude i like that they uh before you say that let me for me it's yeah. yeah three one two three one two uh and like you just said three two two is number one for you no three is number one yeah okay one is number, number, number two, two gotcha and two is number three and like you said one and three like comparing to me it's like comparing Nas and jay-z or dave and patrice they're close, but there, there's a lot that I'll uh, that I'll bring up about three that you know that's that there's something some funny things about. And I'm gonna tell you, and and, and this is a weird way to put this, but I don't want to say I didn't like two because I did, but I didn't. You know, the, the whole thing that spoiled it for me was that 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 ending climactic scene in two, where everything took place during the storm. It just all looked gray and wet, and I didn't like the fact that it was foggy. I, I just hated the, the the climactic ending in two, but it, it it's almost like two to me feels like if you have been fucking nothing but your wife, and you, you miss your side piece. It's your wife, so you love her, and the pussy's good, but it's your wife, and you, you're tired of banging her. So it ain't bad, but it's something that had to be done. <laughs> I two was just uh, two just felt like it was made. It didn't feel like it was. Uh, ex it didn't feel like it was taking you on what was going to be a franchise of multiple equalizers. Right. That that's what I didn't like about it. Uh, it, it didn't have the best story. It was okay. It was okay. Right. But uh, there's a lot that has to do that. that I thought that they addressed some really. The, I, Reasons why I like the read, they, they, they address some things, but I want you to, I want to go through your notes. Well, let me tell you something, man. Uh, the opening to this motherfucker sold. If it was an auction, blah, 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 sold. I was sold, sold, sold. That fucking opening, dude. The motherfucker, when he told dude uh, something, 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 and the guy to my right, he's dead. He just didn't even know it yet. Yeah. And then he took the fucking barrel of the gun, jabs it in the motherfucker's eye, turns him around, pop, 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 and through the back of his head with the barrel jammed in the guy's eye, shoots the other guy. Oh, goodness, man. Only thing that would have made that even colder if when he sat back down, he poured himself a glass of wine. Um, I'm surprised. He almost did. I, I like how, uh, what I liked in that scene, uh, there's a few things I liked in the scene. The scene builds you up to finding him because they show all the dead bodies. Right. And I didn't know if you were going to like that scene because they were a little gruesome. They had the the uh, the cleaver through the guy's uh, head. It was already done. It was already done, so it didn't bother nah. you. Uh, I, I, I like that you walk up and you see all this, and you see the guy scared. He, he I love that he comes out and he goes, he, t he, he told us to wait out here. 
Totally. Mm. So uh, you don't know at that moment. Right. It's it's what you would perceive would be the bad guy. Right. And then you get into the room, and it's Denzel sitting there, and he's wiping his hands. He's cleaning his hands, and that's the beginning of the whole... Uh, right. Because of all the na- damage he had done yeah. prior to. Yeah, but that's the beginning of the napkin scene that you see right. him just folding this napkin that's going to be told throughout the rest yeah. of the story. So I, I, I really liked, I liked the beginning. Uh, there's a few other things that I really liked that are in the beginning because at the end, he... Uh, at the end of that scene, when he takes care of all the business that he needs to, he runs into the little kid outside... And he's walking, tells the little kid to stay in the car, and the kid's okay. And that's who ends up shooting him at the very beginning. Right. Which leads to, which is important to tell the whole story. But what I like about it is, the truth is Denzel is older, and he walks uh, older. He, he does. and But now uh, they have a reason for him to walk with a little bit of a, like a little bit of giddy up and a little, uh, when he tries to move, there's a little bit of uh, that little giddy up hitch that's in there. Or, or he probably also is more, can move slower because it's like him being in Italy, he's at peace. He's at peace, but he's also in, but he's injured. So, you know, he had the cane right. at the beginning, but you, you know that he, you know, that's one of the things I hated about too. He's gingerly walking into, yeah, and then all of a sudden he's a badass killing people and moving like a kung fu fighter from you know the. It was good that they gave him that little bit of a injury at the beginning so that it, it fits the character. Like the guy is older, he is moving a little gingerly. But I like I I really and I don't know if my take is correct, but from what I gather, even from one, his whole thing was always about I promised my wife, I wouldn't do this anymore. Yeah, and of course you know circumstances pulls him back into it but that seems to be a running theme where it's like he's trying to be at peace he doesn't want to be this dude but this this instinct in him to make sure everything is okay mr do right make sure people are well taken care of but i think that's kind of established so what what i love about it being in italy it's like he had to get out of america he had to run away from a place that was toxic and him being in Italy is where new country, new people, new language. He's at peace. Except he didn't run away to Italy. No, no, I don't want to run away. No, but- no, I know, but he he ended up there because of this specific reason for this this thing that he's doing right now. He wanted to get his, the guy's money back. Right, right, and right, that's right. that. That's but he the, ends up living there, and that's what he says. He goes, right. I I feel, and that's when he's there. I feel like this is the place when he first talks to the gangster. This is the place I'm supposed to be. This is the place right. where you feel like he he really wants to be part of this community. Right, and there is this. Uh, a line in there when she says, "Oh, you're one." They, they see you as one of us now. Yeah, and he even said, "You know, I, I, I." He said, "I can't remember exactly how he said it, but he was basically saying, I finally found peace here.'" Here, yeah, you know. So yeah, to to what you're saying, I get it. Because look, you can't escape the fact Denzel's clearly older now. Yeah, uh, I think he's almost like seventy, damn near. But uh, so they're not running away from that. But but again, if I think if you want to play into yeah, when you're at peace and you at calm, you ain't got to move fast. No, but he doesn't. And in two, when you watch him move, when he was walking, there's there's you. he's an older man. Yeah. They really incorporated any flaw. And I don't want to use the word flaw. That's not the right word. They Anything that you might have taken you out of the movie were this old guy. Right. But now they made it. Now he's he has this limp. He's this guy. I think that they started to, the, the, the beginning of the story fits now everything that's right. why i like that's really they addressed everything in in, in uh, three before it ever starts let, let me ask you because because i mean clearly this is an action movie um and before i ask my question here's what i want to say i'm almost mad at denzel for waiting so long to do this and i think denzel always prided himself on being this actor this thespian hence he does the movie uh much ado about nothing he does hamlet like he's a real bona fide, legit actor. So, I, like I don't know this, but if I could talk to him, I would ask him, because clearly he must have been offered action shit before. And like I said, one of his worst movies to me that I didn't like when he did an action movie in his younger days was Virtuosity. Couldn't stand Virtuosity. It was one of the few Denzel movies I truly hated. Um, Whereas, like, you look at a guy like Wesley Snipes, who's a martial artist, who's like a fucking umpteenth degree black belt. That's what Wesley does. So I'm just going, I wonder if Denzel just made it a point to go, 
eh, action ain't really my thing. I, I want to be known as a serious actor, and I am that. Because I'm saying that to say, he does intensity so goddamn well. And what I love about this equalizer shit, and I jokingly say it, and, and I said it in the post, when Denzel hits you with the death stare and the stroke mouth, you're in trouble. That's the beginning of the, that's the, beginning of the film. That's right? the beginning of the ass whooping. And I'm just going, he, like for instance, when you look at Schwarzenegger, it's just clearly action. There is no, take it, you can't get past that. Sly, same thing. It's, it's the blow ups, it's the guns. But with Denzel, there's the action, but there's still the intense acting. So I'm just going, I'm, I'm mad at him because I'm like, dude, you're almost 70 and you're great at this. You couldn't do this in your 20s and 30s? Well, he did it earlier, but it, what's the movie with uh, the one where he blows the dude up with the bomb in his ass? Man on, man on fire. But basically, to me, the Equalizer. But that wasn't really feel like an action movie. Are you kidding me? No, 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 no. I, there's action in it. But that didn't feel like a like when you look at action like a Stallone oh, or you, Schwarzenegger. You're talking about yeah, you're talking about the John Wick kind of yeah. yeah. Okay, but I think Man on Fire really is the beginning of him maybe going yeah I could do this and that's where because Man on Fire is basically the equalizer to a to a degree because that's the one where he's doing the right thing he wants to do it for the right reasons the girl well he developed a relationship, relationship. With, okay yeah. so to me that's the beginning of it i think maybe when he did that film he go oh this looks like a good film hey can we do something around this kind of this right. kind of character right and to your point where you say yeah action and he waited a long time you know as a true actor as he is, I think he would tell you there's action in the movies that I do. It might not be the action that you want, but the intensity is what I want to bring to the film. And he brings that to the, all the, to and he way. does. I'm just saying so, to, to see him run and jump. And like, when I look at the Bourne movies, clearly Matt Damon is a young man and the way they cut it together and the, act, the fight sequences, it's so intense that I'm just going, Imagine a young Denzel with a square jaw. Look at Denzel's jaw now. You can see the fat around it. But nonetheless, my thing is, if Harrison Ford can still crack the whip, I'll watch Denzel break a hip. Uh, <laughs> I like that, but Harrison Ford cracking the whip isn't doing anything for me either. <laughs> uh, Denzel pulled this one off. That's the, that's the bigger point. He pulled this off in a way. And I like how they told the story. I like there's even a scene where he's coming and he's he's walking all funny. It's only one scene. And that's also something that they did. They, they filmed it in a way uh, that I that I thought made him look at his best. There's only one scene where you see him really coming at him from behind and he's right. walking. And it looks like there's a little hitch in the giddy up. You know right, what I mean? Right, so right. Uh, but like, again, I said, he's an injured person still. He just went through. He just got shot in the, in the back. So he has this injury that's going on. Uh, it makes sense. It looks right. I think it. I think this is the best. But you're. But what you're, what you're saying is, if he, Jack Reacher, the the Tom Cruise, yeah. that that would have been a that could have been like that Denzel. Yeah, Denzel. Yeah. Right. I don't need to see Tom Cruise doing twenty two. Jack Reacher and and Mission Impossible. How many? Right. How many times does Tom Cruise want to hang off the side of a plane and run down? I mean, he does it for what he wants to do. Right. More power to him. He does it well. Uh, Tom Cruise does. I'm not knocking that. But, yeah, those those are characters out there that I'm saying, like you just said, why didn't he take this cause up a little sooner? Yeah, I'm just saying. And listen, part of the action thing, to be the action hero, the square jaw, the good looks, the tight skin. And we know when Denzel was in his prime, Mo Better Blues Denzel, that's when all the women... Ah, and the pussies got wet. Imagine him as an action star in his prime. But again, I think that may have, for him, taken away from, what he I don't want to be do that. As, yeah. Right. Well, and the other thing is, just because you, the pussies aren't getting as wet because they're older, but those pussies are still getting wet. Yeah, but that's a kind of different <laughs> milk. <laughs> that's a, that so, milk is spoiled. It's a little dustier, but it's still. Uh, that's cottage cheese in the milk. <laughs> uh, let me ask you this. You take Denzel out and you make that character Stallone. No. 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 Well, and this one, maybe. Because this one I felt was really well written, but I, I, I still wouldn't use Stallone. You know who I, who, who could have done this? Who could have done this? But he c can't anymore. Bruce Willis? Yeah. Bruce Willis. I could see Bruce Willis as this. Cause this I, I could too. This is kind of a, a no, I don't want to say normal man. I know man, exactly what you're saying. But he's a man's man. He's a man. Listen, I'm telling you. Uh, 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 those two things, 
The moment you hear, no matter what the dialogue is, Schwarzenegger, Stallone. But with Denzel, there is no, he's the man, every man's man, Bruce Willis. There is no thing. He's a man's man. Yeah, but don't, yeah, but don't get it. Don't go too far away from this because Stallone, I, he just did the, the the series we watched. Expendables. No, the series we watched, the the television series. Oh, Tulsa King. Yeah, and he 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 doesn't have he's try he's not trying to put the you know the fair enough. And he's acting, and he is also way old, he's older than Denzel. But Tulsa King, while there was action in it, not an action movie, right? When Stallone is in an action movie, it's coming. Oh. A, a gunshot, a, 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 a machine, ba, 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 ba. Yeah, it's coming. Yeah, I uh, I think that he, I think that he doesn't. I think that action idea for Stallone is a little different now, and I think he wants to do different kind of parts. But he's they're they're reversed, they're flipping. Well, you know what I was gonna say. I, I remember when uh, we 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 talked about on the podcast and we watched that documentary about action movies, and they said in the eighties, you know, it was all about muscle. Yeah. You had that muscle. It seems the thing now is old men that kick ass. Liam Neeson in the Taken series, he's no spring chicken. No. Harrison Ford, Indiana Jones, still cracking the whip. Denzel equalizer. Tom Cruise don't look like no spring chicken. So it's now it's like in the 80s, it's about the muscle. It seems it seems like the new muscle now is age. Age is the new muscle. Well, it's also the bankability. I mean, well, that's similar. always been the case. But it is, but you know, it's like I said to you, okay. I, I think that acting has brought in more and more people that are looking for people in a different way than they used to. Because when we were watching uh, uh, Snowfall, and I said to you, uh, the, the his his cousin, the 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 big dude, uh, what's his name, Jerome. Jerome. Where did you find Jerome thirty years ago for movies that could act? He actually he's a good actor. Right. You didn't find guys that look like they spend their life in the gym. In, in the you know Schwarzenegger was the one. I mean, uh, you know, a few people were like that, but you didn't find those. But that that was you know like you, it just wasn't the the career path, or maybe it was, but they didn't take those guys seriously. Now, people who who go to the gym, work out, they know that's part of the uniform because you got to take your shirt off. You got to be you got to be more than just uh, uh, the the white traditional male actor of the early 50s is over right right Right? so that guy then the 60s it changed a little bit more then you had uh different actors but then we got into the 80s yeah you found uh you wanted they wanted like you said the muscle guys but they weren't good actors but young guys at home saw those guys and were like i can do that and they're still in the gym so we're we're at a different stage. We're going to see some good actors that i mean jason statham is not the is is just an example of someone uh, you, he's those aren't the best movies, but he has a character that he brings to it. I'll Unfortunately, bet, I'll, I'll bet the devil. you think it's the same character. <laughs> it's a guy. Yeah, yeah, it's the same character, but he right. bring he brought a character to to the screen. He brought something different, or it could just be that we look at it that way because he he sounds different than. Side note, because you brought up, I, well, I thought you were meaning the Expendables, and when we went to go see Equalizer, they showed the preview for the Expendables. Just sidebar note. If I hear one more piece of lazy writing in this cliche moment, and I posted this one time, and it got like a gazillion hits on when I had Twitter. Um, Every time a black man in an action movie comes across an array of weapons, what's the go-to line? Now, this is what I'm talking about. That cliche fucking line. It's You've seen... That is lazy writing. To any writers out there, stop with that fucking moment. It happens so much. Black dude comes across an array of fucking weapons. Yeah, and he always rubs his hands together. Yeah. Now, this is what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> 50 Cent in the fucking preview. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about. All right, let me get back on topic. I'm just, that moment is so fucking cliche. There's a lot of cliche moments that uh, people write. Because, you know, I think what it is, is that uh, white writers go walking down the street and they listen to some black people and they hear them say a few different things. This is what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? You know, when black guys like shit, (laughs) they say, you know, this is what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? Or, yeah, I mean. (laughs) Listen, I was at the I was at the store and I, I was at the Gucci store the other day. 
There's a black guy. I kept picking up clothes, you know, and I was watching him because I didn't know what he was doing there. Oh, let me guess. Uh, 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 they were too expensive. But then he came across a pair that was inexpensive. Ah, now this is what I'm talking uh, about. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck out of here with that lazy shit. It's almost insulting. <laughs> we should just do that as a skit. That's it. That's all it is. It's just yeah. still a couple of white guys in the store watching the black dude. And yeah. Then they go up to, the, they walk up to the. You ever notice uh, in the soul food restaurant, uh, they, they take a bite of the fried chicken and they seem not to like it. But then a couple dabs of hot sauce, they rebite and go, yeah, now this is what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? Not me. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> So, so, so and, and you know, like, dude, it was, so, I, I love that moment. And they showed it in a preview where there's the main, main bad guy in Italy of the mafia. And then there's his brother, his younger brother. And the preview they showed in, in the theaters, excuse me. Oh, uh, Louis. Mm. The preview that they showed in the theaters <laughs> was, I'm still from last night, the lamb chops and the pineapple fried rice with the shrimp. That pineapple fried rice wasn't bad with the chicken. No, it wasn't. And they, and they had like big chunks of pineapple. So every now and then when you bit into something, you just had a squirt of citrus in your mouth. Ah, I'm not a fan of the, the, the extra squirt of <laughs> <laughs> Juice in your mouth. I didn't eat the hubba bubba gum either because I didn't right. want that. Oh, that's make. such an 80s thing. Yeah. Um, but in the scene in the restaurant when Denzel says, Is that a Timex? And the guy puts his arm out and he grabs him. He does a little wrist maneuver and he's putting that pressure on wherever that is on that his nerve, hand. That nerve, that's something. That nerve. nerve. Yeah. I'm just, I know it's not the right word, but I'm going to call it the meniscus. Uh, I know it's not it. But when Denzel goes, All right, right now I'm putting pressure on your meniscus nerve. It's at a level one. This is a level, oh, it's at a level two. You don't want it to get to four. If it gets to four, you're going to shit on yourself. I was, Jesus, dude. Again, that felt like a line that was delivered by an actor with intensity. I couldn't see, right now I'm putting pressure on your meniscus nerve. It's the level one or the two. If it gets to three or four, you're going to shit on yourself. See, I could, all I'm hearing is, but I could still see it. It would be a different movie, but I could still right see it. Right now, putting pressure on your meniscus, no. So level one, if it gets to a level four, you're gonna shit on yourself. <laughs> I see it. It's written well. It's Stallone, but it's it, but it, it. If it was a if it was a Stallone vehicle, the movie was a vehicle for Stallone. Yeah, you could do it. It would be a different movie. It'd just be a different kind of movie, but. Like you said, he brings a different intensity to it. He brings a, he brings a, a different kind of act action actor to it, where he's actually acting uh, in a in a way where you go, you know what? You know the the bigger difference is too. As he gets older, and you're watching uh, Stallone do these movies, right. it's it, it's going to be harder and harder for you to see him as the tough guy. But because of visually, not visually, the way he talks, the it's not the same guy. Right. Right. Denzel, yeah, you could see it as this this guy, even at this age, has the techniques, the skills. Yeah. But, I mean, there's a certain point when you see 50 dead bodies, you're going to go, well, you know, right. there's only one guy. Right. I mean, someone someone is going to, someone's going to say, just stand there. He's going to come, when he comes to kill you, I'm going to shoot him before he kills you, okay? And the, the other guy's probably going to get killed, but, you know, you're going to shoot him and right. it's over. So, I mean, yes. And no, I the movie's, yeah, there's a leap of faith in these, but as long as you have someone acting that's delivering great Yeah, but, but Denzel, in this franchise, my leap is not that, you know, I, I have a lot of faith in the leap. It's not a far stretch to me. There's a lot of bodies, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and them niggas got guns. <laughs> a lot of guns. <laughs> um, let me ask you this. Uh, if the two had to kill each other, who survives? Denzel as Robert McCall or Liam Neeson's taken character as Brian Mills. If the two had to fight each other, who comes out alive? I say Denzel because Liam just was he a was he a hand combat guy yeah. or did he just do shit? No, he was he was a he was a combat guy and secure. Yeah, he, <clears throat> it's gonna be it's there's it's going to be a lot of bloodiness to the very end. And then uh, whoever still breathing, I guess wins, but I'm I, telling you, Denzo, <laughs> you really don't want to fuck with me. I have a particular set of skills. All right. I hear you. 16 seconds. 
Oh God. I like when I do like when Denzel says, and everybody's where they're supposed to be. In time, is it in time? Everybody will be where they're supposed to yes. be. Yes. Yeah. That's a, that's a great. Those are, there's just some very good lines about time in the movie, and there there always has been, but in this one, it really stands out. Right now, I'm putting pressure on your inner meniscus. <laughs> it's at a level two. That's a level three. You don't want it to get to four, because if you do, you're gonna shit on yourself. My Liam needs to not as good as Frank Kelly. I know. Um, dude, the fact that, like, especially when you saw a Man on Fire, the fact that Dakota Fanning is fully grown and has all her teeth now, uh, and look at Denzel, it just makes you feel old as shit. Because when she was a child, Denzel was an older man. Now he's a much older man, and she's a grown woman. Yeah, but... You know, I was thinking about this, too, because there's a lot of this happening right now. There's a lot of young act, act, actors, 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 actors. Well, I was trying to make it plural. I thought it was actors, actors, actors. Yeah. Uh, you can buy actors and Thor. No, actor. I, I, I've heard people say actors, actors. I've yeah. never heard that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, anyway, uh, that, that are coming to that they're reuniting. Yeah. And they're adults now. And it. Yeah, but it, when you're uh, 11, yeah, you're a little kid, and then, you know, f- seven years later, you're technically an adult, and you're f- almost full-grown. I mean, your face is still developing, but I'm just going to say Dakota Fanning was a really cute kid. <laughs> Did you get the part when I said uh, now she's older, she's got all her teeth? Yeah. Because remember, and she had that one tooth that was long, the other tooth that was just coming in. What if she was grown now but still had them same teeth? Uh, that would be very funny looking. <laughs> <laughs> what do you, no, I thought she did a great. I, I really do think. Did you, did you feel, find her to be an actress? Now is she an actress or is she just? She a, was always intense for a child. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I didn't. I did, you know, I, I don't. I don't think there was anything that that you know forced her to. You know what I mean? Act, act. I mean, I'm not to say she was bad, but there was nothing there that. You when know you, what I mean? The scene with her and Denzel when he find when she finds him in in Italy. Yeah. I mean, you have to, you got to come with something to be able to sit there with a great actor and be able to exchange uh, dialogue back and forth. Yeah, I'm just saying it was good, but there was nothing like, again, when you, how much you doing sh- Hamlet, yeah. much ado about nothing, John Q, like really shit that pulls, requires some shit out of you. That role, she played a fucking CIA or whatever agent, an authoritative uh, agent. But I thought she delivered well with him. Yeah. I really did. Um, it would have been great if at one point she would have just said, Look, Creasy Bear. <laughs> you know, this is one of the few movies Denzel doesn't make a guarantee. Remember how I posted that yeah. thing where he guarantees? But it would have been funny if at one point he broke the fourth wall and go, I guarantee you in this movie, I will not say guarantee. <laughs> huh? It would have been better if it would have when they're rolling the credits. Right. And he came on, he goes, this is going to be a hit. I guarantee it. <laughs> huh? <laughs> um... Uh, let me ask you, if, if you were stuck on an island and you had electricity, for some strange reason, you have electricity on an island, uh, and a flat screen TV, and you could stream, but you could only have one actor's entire filmography, who would you choose between Jack De Niro, Pacino, Cruz, or Denzel? I'll even throw DiCaprio in there. For a year, you're stuck on this island. You could only watch this one actor's complete filmography over and over. Jack De Niro. Denzel, Pacino, and DiCaprio. I'm probably going to go Pacino. Really? Yeah. Uh, but the problem is, you have to know after the end of the year, you're going to hate that actor. <laughs> right. I don't know that I could ever hate Denzel. I'm telling you, Denzel is my Michael Jordan of acting. That motherfucker is so intense, man. He's so intense. When they say certain dudes... You can't take your eyes off them. I can't take my eyes off him when he acts, man. It's so intense. Well, yeah, but see, the whole thing about uh, Pacino, he's going to get you discovered off the island. Discovered? Yeah, they'll, they'll find you because Pacino. The like, yelling? Yeah, the plane's flying over. You turn the movie all the way. <laughs> <laughs> right. He goes into the every, uh, any given Sunday character. Right. And starts yelling at the plane to come down. Yeah, I, I, but uh, Pacino, I, I like the, I think with Pacino, what I like about it is um, 
I get the Godfather, which is right. my favorite. The creme de la creme for you? Yeah, and then you go all the way through the catalog, and you get to watch him go from mild mannered in the in the Godfather to you know by the what time he is now. Yeah, 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 you get to go back and forth. it's a different. That's person. what would make me hate him though. At the end of the year, probably too many. Uh, yeah. yeah. Right, but send of the wo- send of a woman or any given Sunday. That's how the plane's going to hear flying over. Right. Gonna, right, is there someone yelling? What live? <laughs> I got no live. I'm in the dark here. I'm in the dark. Um, yeah, man. I, I, you know, do you put any of these equalizers in your top five Denzel movies? Yeah, you do. I think so. Give me a top five Denzels. Oh, man. You want me to remember movies. Uh, uh, well, I'll help you. I'm, I'm here for you. Okay. Let me give you mine. That might help you. Okay, before you go any further, though, right. before yes. we jump on this, what do you think about Denzel, though, in any given Sunday? As the coach? Yeah. For some reason, I'm, I'm, I'm picturing Coach Boom. Okay. From Remember the Titans. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I, I think Pacino, and not, listen... Denzel's coach sold intensity, but we were also dealing about race. So if you take the race factor out and it's just the intensity of being a football coach and what that is, talking to your guys, I think I prefer Pacino. Okay. Because right. that seems appropriate. I just found, I just, when, when you said it right now, I was just thinking who would, who could- Football, like life, is a game of inches. Yeah, but it's a way different if it's if it's uh, Denzel. All right, football. Uh huh. Like life is about inches. All right, it's about inches. How much you take? How much you can get? And if you go for it, I guarantee it, you'll get the touchdown. <laughs> well, it goes from being an emotional coach right. to uh, a mentally moving co- a coach that moves you mentally. But again, I'm saying he and see that's the well. I was going to say, Denzel can sell intensity without having to raise the volume. Yeah, that's why I'm saying. But s- once upon a time ago, so could Al Pacino. Yeah. But Denzel would be the Mike Th- would be Mike Tomlin. Like, he would be a Mike Tomlin coach. Yeah, I know that name, but I'm not. The Steelers. Okay. Where Al Pacino is... is, uh, is he, Bilicek? No, Bilicek's quiet. He has a quiet intensity. I don't know about... Oh, Gruden. No, no, I, I think of it more like a, a coach pop, though. The guy who got in trouble with his the the assistant coach raping kids. Uh, oh, the f- from Penn State. Uh, oh, I know you talking about that kind of really. That, yeah, that's who. That's I, who. I didn't know anything about that guy in terms of intensity. He was intense. Yeah, he was intense. How about Bobby Knight? <laughs> that's basketball coach, but yeah, Bobby Knight's intensity. Okay. Yeah, that's that's who. It, yeah, those kind right. of those kind of coaches. But there's different coaches. A, a coach K would be the opposite of Bobby Knight, who came from coach uh, right. from Bobby Knight's. Uh, you know, he coached with Bobby Knight. He was insistent. Now he's coach K. Completely different kind of uh, way of motivating. If someone. you if you ever can't remember C- Coach Gruden, the clue for me to you is the Chucky coach. Chucky, I would have said Chucky. Yeah, I would remember that. Before. Um, now, okay, let's go to his movies. On, uh, on my top five, I'd say Equalizer three. Uh, training Day, American Gangster. I got to throw John Q in there just from the emotional heartstrings he pulls from you. Um, I want to say Equalizer 1, but I'm fighting against Man on Fire. I like how you barely can put Man on Fire in there. With, that's one of my favorite movies. I don't like the fact he died in Man on Fire. I don't like the fact he got he got shot and he died. It has nothing to do with it. You know why? Because I think that if he had not died, there should have been a Man on Fire too. It's called Equalizer. That's funny. That's funny. What's what's? But you know, you say that. But I don't know if I can give you that comparison because again, in the Equalizer franchise, that's what he does. And Man on Fire, he was strictly a bodyguard. He was strictly a bodyguard. And had this relationship not been forged between him and his child, who gave him a sense of purpose and life, she, she re-energized him. Because remember, he was drinking, he was contemplating suicide. That's different from Oliver from, from, from a from guy Roger who, McCall. A guy who's trying to make peace with the world, and the only time he comes out and kills people is when he's energized by a particular a bad act that happened to someone that he doesn't feel deserves it. 
it's, it's a very it's there's a thin line that's very similar that runs but, through both but, of them. But that man on fire is an isolated incident. Yeah. You know, equalizer is this is kind of what he does. He's a savior. That's yeah. But the, so he so he's he's always running into predicaments where so he goes. The, so you're saying the difference is that this guy doesn't always do it, but he did it for this one girl. Yes. Okay. Had that circumstance not existed, he never would have done it. And if the first circumstance didn't exist for the equalizer to come out and save the save the um the, the young dude, would it have existed? Or was that the first one? The, young dude. The, the, the guy who the hooker. The, oh yeah, I, I'm Russian. getting, yeah, I'm getting yeah, yeah. Then he wouldn't have done it. You're getting that confused too. The black guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, I did yeah. get him confused. Yeah, uh, but all of the movies is he's coming out to save right. someone that's under. It's the same character, man. Uh, and I tell you another reason why I had issues with two. Um, again, that scene that was just so. Now you talk about leap of faith, leap of leap, leap of faith. Dude, I told you when he goes into the projects and grabs that nigga out of there. And no one, all them niggas with guns in the crib, no one goes, all they go is go, yo, who the fuck was that guy? None of them go, hey, man, let's get this nigga. Now, I will say this. I don't know this, but again, if I could talk to Denzel or the director, Antoine Fuqua, I would have wanted to know, did you not do something with that, what was supposed to be or could have been perceived as an action moment? Because you didn't want to show Denzel fucking up these black dudes. Is that a... Antoine Fuqua call, call? Is that a Denzel call? Or is that a both them call? Because I could see them both going, we don't want to show this black action hero, which Denzel is in this movie, killing brothers. So just snatch him out the crib and we'll, and we'll do that. But that to me was so ridiculous because I'm going, word. I think, um, I think it's a both of them. And it's a good point. And I think that... Uh, uh, Denzel is very thoughtful to how his how his characters relate. To Absolutely, him. he is. So I, I I would think that it had a lot to do with him. And the reason why I, I'm 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 going to double down on that is because Denzel let it be known way early in his career when I saw him do the interview with Barbara Walters, and he said, "Listen, I know who my audience is, predominantly black women, so y you're not going to see me doing a love scene with a white woman because that will turn off my fan base." And I'm loyal to, to these black women. So to that, I'm just going, I don't know, but my spider sense is telling me because if he's all about kicking ass in these movies, which is clearly what he does, why did he stop short there when that seemed like an action scene begging to happen? Yeah, it probably was. Okay. Uh, that's a good question. Yeah, I, I could be totally wrong, but if I had a Q and A with Antoine Fuqua and Denzel, I'd go. Let me ask y'all something. You got to. You should message Denzel. Maybe he'll pique his interest, and then he'll want to talk to you. All right, I want to ask you something. Huh? <laughs> Did you not kill those black men because you're a black man and you didn't want to see be seen killing other black men? Huh? I need an answer. I need you to guarantee it. Yeah. Okay, real quick. X in your top five. Yeah. Okay, dude, because he's play, he's not Denzel, right? I think that's the toughest. You're playing someone that everybody knows. How many people could play that character? That 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 that's right. the other thing. That, to me, that's that's when you talk about stretching as an actor. Right. Even though you know you have something to base the character off of, you got to convince everybody that you're that character for, Fair for two hours. Um, the football movie that we just talked Remember about. Remember the Titans. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 that, That's that in was, your top five. Dude, his acting in that, the way that he plays the character, because he couldn't overact. He couldn't be, you know, the intensity that you talk about? Yeah. He had to tone all that down. It was a good feel-good movie. It was a good feel-good movie. Yeah. I thought they did a good job with it. Right. He really toned down the, the you know what I liked? The, the, the acting I liked was Wood Harrison, the white dude. Great act. It was a good movie. Right. But here's the here's the other part of it. Those are two movies that I just named that you don't get the Denzelisms. Mm. And I think that's hard when you're an actor, you right. bring something to it. That's acting. That's why I think he likes doing movies, uh the Shakespearean movies where he isn't there's <laughs> I would, uh, would love to see you do the Denzel impression uh, of Shakespeare. Uh, to be or not to be, even. Uh, but uh, it, it's just funny to me because mm -hmm. those are those are two tough ones, right? To me, that you know, when you take your 
you take yourself out of it. You got to be committed. That's and then these other movies elevate the film. Now I loved what I really liked about Equalizer three uh, is that they took it to Italy and it was beautiful. It was well shot. It was it was you know like you said how much you hated the gray and the right. This was a good, movie. but that gray was necessary for the painting scene in two. The painting the with the wa- the waves where he's looking at the painting in the house. In the house. Yeah, there's the painting. I gotta re-see that. Yeah. Anyway, um, so I, I'd probably put three. Equalizer I, three. Yeah. Even though I liked, even though I said I liked the origin story in one, mm-hmm. I just like how the three was filmed. Right. Um, and then I have a tough time. Man on fire. Well, man. Well, so that's I said four. four. And I don't know who I, I. I don't know which one I put. On your fifth spot. I'm not putting John Q in there. I don't. No. I did not like John Q. Like, I, it's not that I didn't like it. It just didn't do for me what it did for you. And I watched it again recently just because you like it so right. much. And I was still like, no, no, no. Book of Eli. No. The Book of Eli is one of the ones that I I liked uh, because uh, I love the movie, but I think I like the movie. I like the end. I like being fooled. Right. I like being fooled in a movie. Right. And. But I don't think that that had anything to do with him. Like, the movie itself, right. the story itself, whoever played that part, right. that twist would have been there. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't... But he did... He. But what wouldn't have been there, maybe, You after you see that, you go back and you go, was he blind? Right. Because yeah. he did, he played it in a... Yeah, and yeah. then you go back and you look and you go, okay, maybe, yeah, okay. Right. So, yeah, that could be one. But I, I I don't know I don't know Hurricane, Hurricane was great when he's playing someone else. But there's still Denzelisms in Hurricane, even though he's playing somebody else. Okay. But the Book of Eli that is an underrated movie. I enjoyed the first half of that. You didn't like the twist at the end though. Eh, didn't mean much to me. Eh. You know that's one of those where. And you know, you know what that I would have liked to have seen more action. Yeah. Like when you give me the scene in Book of Eli where he steps back into the darkness and the tunnel when he fights all those guys and he's got chainsaw on. Give me like four or five more of those. You you know what the Book of Eli is? I figured it out for me. What it is? It's like one of my jokes. I make you go through a long period of time to give you the twist to make it the funny. He went through a long period of time to give you the twist that you went. Holy shit! But was there enough meat on the bone for you at the end? Like you said, you you dipped out after the first half. Yeah, I, you know. I, I but see, again, th- that scene, that first action sequence when the lady cons him and thinking she needs help, and all those guys, and he fights all those guys. He cop cuts the guy's hand off, and then they cut to the other fight scene and the bar. Remember when he's rolling up his sleeves, and as he's rolling up his sleeves, he's praying, he's saying whatever Bible verse. All right, should the Lord take it that everybody say that God shall be the penitent. and blah, 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 blah. Give me five or six. But he, th- that intensity. Action with his intensity is a fucking great combination. And I just thought Book of Eli, they had those two moments, and yeah, they had to shoot out in the house, but I don't know, man. I, I just I, I wish I could have had more. There were people that I that I read in some of the comments on my post about Equalizer that said, what enough action in Equalizer 3? What? Well, I, I guess compared to, to the other ones, maybe there wasn't. Enough. But here's what I like, though. I thought after the opening scene and then the scene in the restaurant where, again, where he puts the pressure point on the guy's hand, it took a minute to get to that final climactic scene. But what I loved about it was... It built the intent. Those guys were, the villains were such assholes. You couldn't wait to to see Denzel fuck them up. That scene where they, you know, beat up the cop in front of his kid and then snatched his little girl and basically put the gun near her head and said, next time we're going to kill your kid and we might fuck your wife. And then they threw the old man who was in a wheelchair out the window. He's hanging from a noose. These guys were such fucking dicks I was like oh it built up the intensity I'm going I can't wait to see Denzel fuck these niggas up but to me that's one of the problems in the movie when he throw they throw the guy on the wheelchair out and leave him there and he says leave him there for a message the Denzel scene when he comes out and the rest of the the, the town's out right and they don't shoot Denzel 
they already they've already made but everybody had the, the camera, camera phone out. so they were like yo we but he wasn't afraid of the police because there's people that were taking the, the, the police were on his payroll that that that's the flaw in the movie all right I, i'm trying I, I hear you but i'm trying to go if the village is all banning because i was thinking the same thing here's where i went now wait a minute this nigga denzel is surrounded by the entire mafia guns pointed if he, I don't give a fuck how many seconds he puts on a stopwatch. There's no way. If, if they do this, as much as I love Denzel, I'm going to go, this is jumping the shark. But the way they played it with the village, like it all takes a village. We all got our camera phones on you. So if you kill this man, we all got you on fucking camera film killing a motherfucker. Or he, they just shoot all the people with the phones and take them away. Well, that that would have been just as ridiculous if I, you Denzel know. would have took him out. So I, I I don't know that that's the only part that you know he they still had <laughs> they still had the uh, still had their dude the the head of the police right. I, it was it was a tough one. It that was tough for me. I I took the leap because I like what you said. They had the phones. They had the video. But and and they can't lose the town because they need the town to continue to work because they need the money from the townspeople. So I understood that. But right. if you really wanted to work. Pop, pop, and then <laughs> that, that's it. Yeah, that's it, right? Um, uh, oh shit! Uh, oh shit! Damn, I am. Oh, okay. Here, you know what? Okay, here we go. Um. After knowing this franchise, after watching this franchise, and let's be honest, action movies, yes, women can enjoy it, but it's a male demographic. It's it's action movies are for men what fifty shades of gray are for women. It's geared towards us. Can women enjoy it? Yes. But come on, let's not kid each other. So after watching this franchise, and after watching Denzel and how great he is in it, and I'm a guy. And this is when I'm watching another guy give me guy shit. I'm supposed to turn around and watch The Equalizer with Queen Latifah and watch this chick with these enormous slave titties beat niggas up. Get the fuck out of here. Listen, ladies, you don't have to do everything we do. Some stuff is a private male club. You know, let us have our smoking and brandy room. Jesus Christ, man. How the fuck can you seriously watch The Equalizer with Queen Latifah and enjoy that? Man, I, I, <laughs> what I'm going to say is going to get me so much hatred. It, it's Maybe not. It's for the same people that go to a WNBA game. Go enjoy women. Women go enjoy women being athletically strong Boo! in basketball. Women enjoy watching other women be strong in a movie. There's no problem. I don't have a problem with that, but that's who I would think that the demographic is built for. If you're a, if you're I, a man and have a daughter, you don't think that you want to see your me, daughter strong me, and powerful? Go, let me go again with what Bill Burr said. Make your own fucking movie. I, I've said the Make same thing on here. Make your own fucking character. Because what you're doing is, and, and, and there's no way you can separate the two. If you're going, all right, this is the remake of a character we've already established in a guy's genre with an actor who is phenomenal. Now, let me give you this, but with her. That's why it's a TV series. And and that's another thing. The intensity and in what you can do in a movie, the violence, the gore, you can't do that on CBS. Yeah, you can do it on FX or something like that at, at, the, at the most for regular television. Yeah, so, you know, wh wh what do you, as a dude, you want me to buy this product when I've already been, it's been sold to me in the, in the theater with this guy with no limits? I'll tell you what movie that I believe a woman should have been the star of. And it's an action movie, kind of slash comedy, though. Right. But I would I would put I put I would put a woman in that part, MacGyver. Because women have shit in their purse that they can make anything happen. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> that I would believe. Or MacGyver is a Mexican. Oh yeah, but that's just he's just a guy with duct tape. 
Just <laughs> duct tape and a couple screwdrivers, man. This dude has it done. Oh my god, that is hilarious. So, but no, but I, I it's really a that's a woman's part. Uh, that that is a that if they made a MacGyver and they could make it, they could still make it realistically uh, like the, the MacGyver, but have the chick in there with. She would come up with the ideas. No one could save the world with a piece of gum, uh, a hair dryer, and, and some bullshit that's in your purse. Come on, <laughs> that's the winner. That's 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 the formula. And, and I'm gonna be honest, man. And, and again, this is where I, I I say you know a little bit, you know, a little bit. This is the part where I'm a pinch of chauvinistic. Even if it was a character that wasn't a remake and it was a you know homegrown uh, original character. I, I probably wouldn't watch it anyway. Atomic Blonde, you didn't watch it. I, I did watch it, and I, I was like, eh. you know what? It was a, it was an original character, homegrown. But I went, this is fucking the female Jason Bourne. Kind that, of. That, that's what this is. Well, but you could do that for any movie. You could find some ties. But so that's what I'm saying. But, but she got her ass kicked in that movie, so it wasn't like it wasn't. As she should. should. It wasn't like it was they 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 you know had this. Ronald culture. Williams just entered the chat. But go ahead. <laughs> But it, 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 that one, I thought she did a great job in it. I it, there's leaps of faith in it, dude. I just, I'm I'm all male nigga, and seeing a woman in thigh high boots with a with a skinny thigh, just putting a dude through a wall, it's just so absurd. It's absurd. Do you think that uh, you have a problem with it? Because if, if the character could do that. That character could kick your ass. Do you have a problem with the idea that a woman could kick your ass? Because there's women out there who kick your ass, Aries. No. Yeah. No. Yeah, there are. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. My mind will not allow me. That's why you can't watch that movie. There's women out there that can kick your ass. <laughs> my mother could kick my ass. <laughs> She's as old as uh, Roger McCall. Maybe that's what they, they need to make a movie called Mom, and then they use those letters. The Momalizer. Yeah, the mom. <laughs> <laughs> Starring my mother. She just comes with a shoe and a spatula. That's it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. Uh, that's all I got, man. That's it. Yeah, that's yeah well, it. we're there. We're at the hour. Uh, we're Fifty-three minutes. You know, we got to thank everybody for uh, this is our five hundredth episode. Oh shit! So um, we do want to thank you for uh, CC, Kosh, Ranfoots, Shamor. Alexis Flowers, Ronald Williams, uh, Farah, if he's still breathing, you, uh, my father-in-law to be who listens to the to the podcast, so they can find A B, <laughs> uh, uh, other girl B. Uh, I noticed some motherfuckers out there screaming, "Say me, say me!" Uh, Pancho Z, if he's still with us, Sergio Shosha, uh, Shannon, may she rest in peace. Uh, you know who you're forgetting? Who? Brandon from the UK. Cocksucker. <laughs> <laughs> well, this nigga, I'll tell you, this nigga kills me. Because I'm telling you, dude, he writes in every fucking uh, uh, YouTube uh, comment. And he's getting more like, fuck you, nigga, Aries. You're emotional. You're this, you're that. But this nigga will not go away. Um, do you have any basketball related stories that you want to bring up before we end this for him? No, not really. Not really? Mm -mm. It was a football weekend. I know you didn't watch any football. Is it still preseason? No, no, this was the first weekend. Oh, this was the official first weekend? Yeah, I, I watched a little bit. I just wasn't, I wasn't <clears throat> mentally, mentally, I wasn't there. I'm in, because uh, we are in, uh, we're in Bridgeport, Connecticut, and it's, uh, it, it's, it's a nice series of towns, but uh, the comedy culture here has not been fully uh, found. Yeah, it's uh, it's not it's not developed yet, but it's coming. It's coming. But the pizza at Sally's. Shout out to our guys at Sally's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big shout out. Uh, they got some pizza. We we got Aries got seated. I was gonna say we got oh, seated, but man, I'm gonna be I'm gonna rephrase that. Aries got seated. I have to sit across from. Oh man, let me tell you something. Uh, the first time we were here, it was a little bit of wait. But they had this outside thing going because of COVID. So and it wasn't a real big wait. We we waited like maybe a half hour, maybe. Yeah, but we we they got a seat it, but we had to wait for the pizza because yeah, 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 there's yeah. only they can only make so many because right. of the oven. This time, this was a this looked like the DMV. I mean it or, or, or the check cashing spot on payday in the hood. I mean, there was a line, a line. And dude was like, 
It's an hour wait uh, just to get in. Then it'll probably be about another hour before you get your pizza. And we pulled a good fellas, man. Uh, me and Andy walked in the joint. One of the servers uh, recognized me. Then the two dudes who run the joint, they came outside and they was like, oh, yeah, blah, 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 blah. And while we were standing across the street, dapping it up, hugging it up, talking with them, everybody across the street that was in line kept staring like, what the fuck is going on? So after a couple more beats, we walk right in. And I'm telling you, I told Andy, it felt like a scene in Goodfellas. If we could have been walking in slow motion and then you just heard that Frank Sinatra, my life went from rags to riches. And you just, the camera just... Everybody's face from left to right. It was all slow motion. Fuck you. Who the <laughs> fuck are these motherfuckers? Oh, it felt, I felt so Italian. Uh, but the pizza was great. They took really good care of us. We really appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Uh, I'm not saying anybody's name because no one, uh, I don't want anybody to know anybody's name. I don't want it to be a problem for anybody. <laughs> but uh, it was it was it was a good time. And next time we're gonna go there, but we're also gonna go do either Peppies. modern or Peppies, modern okay. or Peppies, and 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 check out some other pies just to, so we can compare them. Not that uh, listen. Once you find the one, you know, once you get that one, it's gonna be very hard for that next one to be better than that. I don't think that it's gonna be better. I think that listen. I, I am I am certainly grateful as fuck. For uh, but we're not leaving Sally's, we're gonna do Sally's and another one. Just uh-huh. one uh-huh. uh, I'm, I'm listen, I'm grateful for Sally's, but I'm gonna be honest with you, it didn't have the same zest this time. I we didn't get the right pizza, I think they, they gave us the wrong, they gave I us the, we, they definitely gave us the wrong pie, they and, gave us a plain pie, and we, and we used, ordered pepperoni, and I think we had sausage on the last one, yeah. But I, it was also, it was just there's it wasn't their cheese, you like cheese, there's no cheese on this one, it's just it's, no, it's just sauce. Yeah, and it's a pizza that they make, and so uh, I think that you just were. That's uh, that's what the problem. But was. even the clam pizza that I oh, got I thought last the clam time was so good. Yeah, for, it didn't feel as clammy on this one. <laughs> I liked. Maybe I got a better side than you did. <sighs> uh, it, it was delicious. Uh, and but I, still, I'm gr- I'm grateful for the the uh, the hookup. Uh, I I loved it. I loved it, and I still have some here. I might even try to eat some before I go. Uh, it's only been sitting there for. It's a little over 24 hours now. It's in your fridge, obviously. Yeah, right? it's in the fridge. Uh, okay, uh, what else we got? Is that That's it. it. Well, so thank you guys. Thanks for the support. Here's where we're going to be if you want to come support us live in person. Uh, like I said, we, thanks, to, uh, thanks to everybody who came out to Bridgeport uh, to see the shows. But on September 15th to the 17th, we're going to be at the Louisville Comedy Club. Uh, get your tickets, man. I like that club. It's a really cool club. Uh, I'm looking forward to going, tasting some whiskeys, and going back over to. Uh, oh, I remember that now. Yeah, the whiskeys. Yeah, because all the whiskeys, yeah. and then we're going to go obviously to yeah uh, the Muhammad Ali uh, Museum. Um, September 29th to the 30th, we're going to be at the Kansas City Improv. October 6th to the 7th, we're at Hartford Funny Bone in Manchester. Uh, let's see. October 13th to the 15th, we're going to be at the uh, Improv in Orlando, Florida. Uh, October 19th to the 22nd, we're going to be in Chicago. It's in Schaumburg. Uh, October 26th to the 29th, we're going to be at the Milwaukee Improv. Looking forward to getting back there. This is only our second time we're going to be there. Uh, November 3rd through the 5th, we're going to be at Levity Live in West Nyack. We're going to see how much of the mall is still open um, and maybe go to Home Depot. Uh, November 10th to the 12th, we're going to be at the Improv in Tampa. Uh, it's actually in Ybor City, but that's where we'll be. November 16th to the 19th, we're going to be at the Ontar- in Ontario, California Improv. Uh, nice to get back there. That's a once a year. Excited to go back to. Uh, November 24th to the 26th, we're going to be at the San Jose Improv. Uh, in San Jose, California. December uh, 1st to the 3rd, Tacoma Comedy Club. Um, looking forward to getting back there, too. Uh, December 7th to the 10th, Magoobies. Uh, it's in the uh, Baltimore, Maryland area. December 15th through the 17th, we're at Summit City. Oh, I think it's just called Summit now, Fort Wayne, Indiana. And December 21st through the 23rd, Bricktown Comedy Club in Oklahoma City. And December 28th through the 30th, D.C. So we're looking forward to getting back there. Yeah. Guys, if you're going if you're going to be in any of those areas, please get your tickets. Um, 
looking forward to this uh, to this run to the end of the year. Uh, our girl Shamor had an idea that I think is pretty funny that I can't wait to work on. You know, a lot of people really took to the uh, MLK as Sam Jackson. Yeah, she suggested, "What if Martin Luther King also replaced uh, Joe Pesci's character in Casino, or even Goodfellas?" And I was thinking about that desert scene when he said, uh, <clears throat> you know, if it wasn't for me, everybody would have a piece of your Jew ass. Back up. No, back to fuck up. And then at the end, he goes up. What did he say? He goes, uh, maybe he's, don't you ever go over my head again, you <laughs> Jew motherfucker. you. <laughs> <laughs> so... I'm a, I'm a, again, I want to piece something together. With if, that. If, if you know his relationship with the Jewish community, uh, Doctor King was really good. Actually, he had, really he had a rabbi that he was uh, right. connected to. So it, it's funny to me to hear it. Uh, right, but very funny. Uh, there's so many good movies that he could do. <laughs> right, right. Uh, what do you mean I'm funny? Funny how? <laughs> like a clown? Do I amuse you? <laughs> no, wait a minute. He's a big boy, Anthony. He knows what he said. <laughs> uh, what I, the fuck is so funny about me? Okay, I'm sorry. No, I think that's fantastic. Uh, all right. Uh, I, I would like the one. Uh, I don't. I just think because it's comedy, it would be a funny. The um, lethal weapon with Joe Pesci. When that's how they fuck you at the drive through. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> but he does the. Uh, okay, 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 okay. You got to go be careful when you go to the drive to because that's how they fuck you. They know you're far from home and you won't turn back. And they fuck you in the drive to <laughs> You can't, you can't, I don't think there's a character that you couldn't do. I really don't. I, I think that it, it yeah. yeah, it just, it just works because there's no one that is, that's right. the voice, man. Yeah. Yeah. How, how do you beat that? All right, uh, J. Pitt, uh, Country to God. Uh, he sends the, and he, of course, he didn't listen. Uh, oh, God. Of course, he didn't listen and uh, sent me the tag so I could promote him. But in any event, the guy's name is J. Pitt, Country to God. He gives me the clean version and the dirty version. This is the dirty version. Uh, it's called Hot. Uh, enjoy. That's the show. Spears and Steinberg. Thanks for listening to the Spears and Steinberg podcast. If you'd like to know who's responsible for this shit, it was hosted by Ari Spears and Andy Steinberg, produced by Steve Merrick and Anthony Holmes, executive producer Big Papa, Robert Kelly, and Matt Klein Schmidt for the Laugh Button Podcast. For more information on where to find us on the internet, visit SpearsbergPod.com.